patch just went live in Halo Infinite today, which actually addresses a lot of bug issues, performance issues, especially within the armor hall, settings being reset, and a lot of other topics like Forge. So if you guys want to know everything, stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. And did you know that 65% of the viewers on this channel are not subscribed? If you guys want to keep up to date with everything going on with Halo, make sure you tap subscribe. If you enjoyed the content and part, found it informative to help you out, make sure you tap that like button. This is the best way to help out the channel. Let's get right into the details. So we talked about some of these patch notes the other day when they were first announced, but there's some changes that recently happened, but just so we're all on the same page here. Improvements to stability, navigating customization menus on PC. It's been super glitchy and stuttery recently. Glad to see that being fixed up. Underperforming will no longer appear under some match statistics on post game crash report because sometimes you'd have less deaths and it'd say you underperformed yeah it doesn't make a whole lot of sense but i'm glad to see that guy fixed up right here also when purchasing the premium battle pass bundle the confirm purchase prompt now correctly reflects that players will receive an additional 100 xp there's some crucial changes coming to the multiplayer side of things and players are now less likely to experience rubber banding or jittering when interacting with various environmental objects on multiplayer maps that's crucial because you just want to make sure your playing experience is smooth and how it should be. Improved stability while responding on multiplayer matches on Xbox Series S and X consoles. Players on all platforms are now less likely to experience crashes while loading between main menu and gameplay. On PC, players are less likely to experience crashes with non-English keyboards, which that's kind of a unique thing right there for sure, but glad to see that's happened and being addressed right there. Online matches are now less likely to disconnect all players while playing Escalation Slayer and Covert One Flag. Players are now less likely to experience crashes while playing on Xbox One, Xbox One S, and Xbox One X. Resolve the crash that occurred when too many navigation and objective indicators were on the screen all at once. So basically a lot of stability fixes right there. Rubber banding and jittering on live objects is super nice as well because obviously you want to make sure your experience is able not crazy glitchy and just playing how it should. Now Forge saw a lot of changes as well, saying that today's update resolves a high impact issue that incorrectly limited the number of script brains that can be placed on a map. Obviously when you're forging a map, you won't be able to play and also edit at its full capacity. And for some reason it was being limited right there. So now that limitation has been removed. Now a really great thing that 343 just did is that they updated the playlist to add some Forge maps into the regular rotation. So you don't need to go into your specific Forge playlist you just jump in and play regular halo which i think is what we've all been asking for this whole time basically you've seen the modes of quick play fiesta and tactical slayer seeing these additions made but it also came with some removals so the additions that they made were capture the flag on starboard which that midship remake which looks amazing king of the hill on salvation oddball starboard one flag ctf on salvation but they also removed the combo of escalation slayer on aquarius oddball Epyrian, slayer aquarius king of the hill on catalyst fiesta saw the addition of the maps absolution perilous salvation and starboard now, Tactical Slayer has objectives in there now, which is kind of interesting. With Tactical Slayer CTF on Bazaar, CTF on Chasm, King of the Hill on Cliffhanger, and King of the Hill on Recharge. It also means we saw the removal of Bandits, Rifle starts on Recharge, Sidekick starts on Cliffhanger, Detachment, and Empyrean. Now, this definitely should liven up the gameplay of Tactical Slayer as we all know that SWAT's typically like a Slayer type mode, not really much in the way of objectives, but I remember playing on the MCC when it had tactical slayer options when it comes to objectives and it actually kind of was a fun mix up the whole thing, especially since it's a social playlist that you don't need to worry about it being so sweaty so much. So the addition to CTF and King of the Hill, I'm actually really looking forward to it. It's a shame they didn't add any of the new maps, but since tactical slayer is kind of its own beast when it comes to gameplay, I can understand how maps like Perilous, Salvation, Starboard, and Absolution are much more designed for your standard gameplay experiences. But it kind of rounds back to what I was talking about earlier, saying it is a social mode, so I don't know, just kind of have some fun with it. But it depends how it plays out, because I remember playing Bazaar on Tactical Slayer, and that's a terrible experience. Interesting thing though, so you can see how they added in the maps like Salvation and all the other various modes like Starboard and other other kind of Forge maps in with the Halo Infinite with this update for Quick Play. But the thing is that the Community Collection playlist is still here, and it's basically all the same maps that you and experiences you had previously, which makes me wonder if this will actually cannibalize 
what the community collection has, which I have seen the playlist dwindle in population quite a bit over the last few weeks. So either the community collection playlist will either get some kind of update with some new maps to kind of test out with the public, then transfer over into matchmaking or just cut it out completely and just put the new maps into the regular rotation of playlists. While we're at it, let's check out the shop and there's an interesting Chimera setup right here. As you can obviously see the skinned reflexes right here. Pretty large size bundle here. You get a bunch of the same kind of coding for various weapons, starting weapons with and Halo of it, which they do look pretty nice, not gonna lie. But to me, they're just kind of standard customization. Nothing really too crazy, just kind of colors. Nothing really, they really catches my eye a whole lot. And some interesting shoulder pads and helmet attachments right here for the Chimera Core, if you're so interested. It does have a pretty sweet looking blade though. That's a cool attachment. But again, it's just like one thing out of this 1500 credit bundle right here, which is like, yeah, it's might be a little bit high for me. Side packs look pretty cool as well. This core coding though is wild. This is one of the codings I was talking about before with this game that if 343 are gonna be going this route, like the more wacky wild style of customization, then obviously something like this, I would say would probably be something you'd wanna see within the store as it is a little bit more genuinely different than what we have right now within Halo or what we've had experiencedly within Halo of being really standardized colors kind of stuff like I was showcasing right here earlier, right? Right with this armor coding or sorry, this weapon coding, it's just kind of like, you know, red, white you know with a little bit of black nothing too crazy there but when you get this kind of stuff in the shop this is something i think that's actually like shop worthy though though personally it's not my cup of tea we have the core emotion which is two different cores coatings right here which see again like these are very much like you would expect to see in a shop i like the reflectivity on that kind of stuff as well this comes in for the chimera as well as the mark 7 no mark 5 sadly which is or yo roy or anything else uh, that cross core customization for coatings, man. I don't know. It's beginning real questionable to see if that's ever going to come in. I know 343 is working on it, but it's weird that they're still charging for this kind of stuff. We have the spring growth uh, coating here for your various weapons, which this looks pretty nice. Again, a nice little pattern to it. But then again, it's also just kind of like the color green. Nothing that exciting that would make me want to jump in and be like, oh my God, I absolutely need to pick this up. You know what I mean? Like it's, uh, I mean, it looks cool, right? Pretty clean. Nice little digital effect to a lot of stuff. We usually have it on like the Hydra, the sniper rifle as well right here. And on top of that, you also get the another weapon of the battle rifle. Again, it will stand out definitely, but nothing too crazy. They have the Cambion armor set right here. It looks like different attachments. Oh my God, that's right. This Rakshasa core visor right here. This looks really cool. I think this might just be for Rakshasa though. I'm not totally sure. Yeah, I think it's like a helmet attachment. These are actually all do look pretty cool for the Rakshasa, so. If that's kind of your jam, that's definitely something worth checking out. I mean, like, this does look pretty cool. Like, and for 700 credits, I mean, this is something that definitely visually stand out. So, I mean, I'm not going to buy it, but if you're so inclined, there's that option for you. Then just for today, for the daily, we also have the Strong Iris, which is just purple for 200 credits. If you really like purple, that's your jam, you might like it. 